Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Hey guys and welcome to this 3D modeling tutorial. This time we're going to be modeling uh, this KST UV F1000 uh, dual band walkie talkie. Um, as we can see we have uh, the front view, we have uh, the side view, the other side and also the back which is going to be really useful not only for the reference but also uh, to texture it as well. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to be taking this um, these images uh, just to help us to model it and to shape it correctly. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to be um, taking in this front view first. So we're going to go into 3ds Max, we're going to be creating a plane but you want to create this plane uh, in the front view, okay? Because that's where um, we're actually going to be placing that that plane. Uh, if you place it in the, if you try to draw it out in the perspective view, it's going to be um, drawn out on the ground, and then you'd have to rotate it. So it's best and easier just to draw it out in this front view, um, and it should come out just fine. Now, one thing we need to do is make sure that this plane is shaped correctly. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the Modify tab. I'm going to reduce the length and the width segment so they're both on one. And then I'm going to be uh, opening up the images. Now, I've already saved these. Uh, I will provide the links to the images. Uh, they'll be in the description below. So make sure you go ahead and uh, get the images and save them onto your own uh, drives. Um, so I'm going to go with the front view and if I click on that you can see if I hover over it uh, or it should tell you at the bottom panel uh, depending on if you've got Windows 7 or Windows like 10 um, then it's 1200 by 1200 so it's a perfect square so I just need to make sure that my plane um, is a perfect square so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go something like 200 by 200 okay there we go I'm going to lift that up. It doesn't really matter too much, but I'm just going to lift it up anyway, uh, just so it's above the grid. Um, and then I'm going to be going into my material editor. <clears throat> the easy way to bring in this material uh, is we can drag it in from a folder just like that and dump it on one of the material spheres. And, and once it's on there, we can actually dump that over onto the uh, Tech onto the plane as well. So there you can see that's the uh, material. If you want to double check, it's not squished, that's actually how it should look. So if yours comes out looking anything like that, then you know that your plane isn't the correct size. It should be perfectly square. Okay, um, so then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually be bringing in the side view, just one of the side views, because that's going to give me um, just the information there, just to ensure that it's it's shaped correctly uh, from the side. We don't want to get that wrong, um, so we're just going to be bringing that in as well. So the easy thing to do here is you can just copy this plane. So if you hold shift, make sure you're on the rotation tool. So that's either E on the keyboard or the rotation, um, select and rotate icon just there. We're going to hold shift and rotate that across. Now you see right now it's free rotation. If we, if we want that to snap, right, so we can get 90 degrees exactly, we can just go and click onto the angle snap toggle button just here. It's a little magnet with the curved double-ended arrow. Um, so I'm just going to click that and now when I hold shift and I rotate it's going to snap by 5 degrees. Okay and then I can get 90 degrees perfectly done. Alright um, so I'm going to place that there and then I'm going to be bringing in this uh, walkie-talkie image. So I'm going to go with this side one. Okay so make sure you use side one. Don't use side two. The reason being is because it's facing left. So if you have a look at this, it's actually facing left. Um, so you want the um, walkie-talkie image where the clip is on the right-hand side and the front of it is on the left-hand side. I'll explain why in just a second. So we're going to drag that into a new material sphere and then drag that over onto the model, uh, onto the um, plane. Okay. Now, as you can see, right, I know the scales don't match up, so we're going to fix that in just a moment. But uh, for now, if you can have a look, the walkie-talkie is facing like left on this plane just here. So it's facing left that way. Therefore, we needed this side view to be facing also in the same direction. You don't want them to be conflicting with them both facing each other. Okay, so that's really important. So now what, what we need to do is we've got to line these up. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a box. And in my front view, I'm going to change it from wireframe to shaded. So I'm going to click where it says wireframe and go on to shaded. And also the same here as well. So this left view, I'm going to go uh, shaded also. 
In fact, can you see how this is back to front? So this is that way and this is facing the opposite direction uh, and this is facing right. I'm gonna go in my view and change that where it says left to right. Okay, so that's gonna be a lot better. What I tend to do also is just get rid of the grid because the grid can be pretty annoying when you're trying to um, model and stuff. So if you just press G on the keyboard, that's going to um, get rid of the grid for you as well. So now I'm gonna go into my front view and I'm going to be um, drawing this out to match the size. Okay, so don't worry too much about the fact that they're not the right scales in our perspective view, like the left view, uh, the side view of the walkie talkie is bigger than the front view. We're gonna fix that in just a moment. We just need to create our initial uh, box first. So I'm just gonna draw that out. And it's gray of all colors, which is pretty boring. So I'm gonna actually change that in just a second. So um, in fact, let's just make a new box and it should be a different color. So if we draw that out, again, don't worry too much about it being perfect, but try and match up the height and the width, uh, but we can adjust these things late, later anyway. So we're just gonna draw that out. One thing you wanna do is once you release the mouse button, you're gonna push forward just to add some height uh, to that um, box, else it's just gonna be very, very thin. So if you make sure you just push the mouse forward, I mean, you should know how to create a box by now. Um, so I'm gonna to go to around about here, but again, we can adjust that, um, the, like the depth of the box uh, later. Now we've got that created. If you look in this uh, left view, we can see that the box is this small, but this is obviously that big. So this is the box is gonna act as a guide and that's gonna tell us how big we should make this, okay? And that's gonna obviously help us in terms of lining them up. Um, so I'm just gonna change the color of my box. Again, it's just too bright. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker uh, and go blue. Just make things a little bit easier to see. So with this, I'm just gonna go on to scale by pressing the R key or clicking up on the scale um, tool just here. I'm gonna scale this down again with this triangle. Don't go on the outline. Um, in fact, it's not gonna to matter too much in this one, but you don't wanna ever use the outline unless you know what it does. And then we're gonna move it. To, can you see what I'm doing? I'm just trying to line it up so it's still just a little bit off. Just gonna go a little bigger. Maybe lift that a touch. There we go, so that's pretty close, I think. So that's gonna give us a good um, reference for its uh, height. So, sorry, from the side. So we're just gonna place that there. As we can see, it's obviously too thin. Um, so we're gonna adjust that in just a moment. So I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna save this file, okay? Because the important thing here is that you save as you go. If you don't save, then you could lose it if it crashes, um, which can be a problem. But don't forget your auto back folder, which is um, stored in the documents under 3ds Max. And in there you always have at least three backups that are saved um, every sort of five minutes or so. Okay, uh, so now once we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scale it a little bit, just a touch, just to make it match. Now one th issue we have is that um, we can't currently see through our box, meaning we can't actually line it up perfectly. So the way that we can do that is we can press Alt and X on the keyboard. So Alt and X, that will make the object uh, transparent or semi-transparent, uh, meaning we can then see through it to line it up with the reference images, okay? So uh, that's gonna help us quite a bit. So you can toggle that on and off by pressing Alt and X, okay? Now the key thing here also is you don't just, you, Basically, you don't just wanna be going off like the um, reference images in 3ds Max. Make sure you look at the pictures full screen as well, um, because that's gonna, again, give you some more information. It's just easier to see um, just the overall shape of it, really. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna, first of all, um, start shaping it uh, around like the front and around the edges as well. So let's go ahead and I'm guessing chamfer should be one of the first things we do. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna, um, first of all, go to edit poly. So we're gonna convert the box into an editable poly. And then we're gonna go on to edge. And if you can look in the corners, uh, the corners are actually sort of bent, aren't they? Like you've got these kind of little angles on, on the corners. They're not perfectly smooth, but you have, um, a curved kind of angle on the end. Uh, so we're just gonna create those first. So we're gonna go ahead and select one of these edges around the corners. Then we're gonna hit ring and that's gonna select every single one for you. So all four, it should select. And then we're gonna go on to chamfer. 
fact, let me just say tra semi-transparent. We're going to go on to chamfer. Click on the button next to chamfer to bring up the settings. And then we're just going to increase that so it kind of matches up with our reference. So make sure you zoom in on that front view. That's probably going to be the one that's going to help us the most. Um, so we're going to kind of get it as close as possible. Again, it's not going to be perfect. So we're going to try and match it up as best as we can. Okay, I think that's pretty good overall. So I'm going to fix that up in just a second. You can then hit the tick to apply. Uh, we're then going to go onto Vertex and we're going to simply click and drag over the entire right hand side. So I'm just going to do it a few times. You click from the top, so above, and you're going to drag that selection box over the entire right hand side of the walkie talkie. Like for me anyway, because I actually need to shift it across. So you see now it matches a lot better. And the same with the left, just at the bottom. Uh, I'm not actually going to shift it across too much because, I mean, the picture's a bit at, it's at an angle, so it's not perfectly straight. So we're going to kind of use it as a reference, uh, maybe bring this up a touch as well. But we're just going to sort of loosely uh, create it just using the reference because it's not perfect. It's not exactly straight. So don't worry too much if there's a bit of a overlap. Uh, it's not too big a deal. Um, so then we've got the overall shape done. Okay, that's pretty good. So now what, what we need to do is we need to create a very small uh, chamfer on all the edges because if you look, they are rounded corners and also uh, if you look from this view, you've got this little kind of angle just here. It kind of pops in a little bit and just there as well. So we're going to create a very, very subtle um, chamfer. So if you go onto edge and if we select all the edges, so you can just hit control A or you can click and drag over the entire model. Then we can go on to chamfer. That's obviously going to be too much, so it's going to use the same chamfer as before. That's broken. That's a broken model right there. So we're going to reduce the chamfer amount quite a bit, maybe going up to about here. Um, just something small. Again, don't worry about the number that I'm, that I'm using because um, <clears throat> That's going to be different for you depending on how your 3 ds Max is set up. So um, don't worry too much about the number, but focus on how much you're actually chamfering to kind of make it match up with the image. So again, um, these images don't match up 100%, so I might tweak that a little bit, but I just want a very, very small chamfer just to kind of get those details um, in, the, in the corners, just to round them off a little bit. We're going to hit the tick. Okay, so next thing, uh, we can just see how it looks at, at the moment. So let's just press uh, Alt and X and click off it. So you can see what's happened now. We've kind of chamfered off those corners, so we've got that rounded uh, effects going on. Um, but we'll worry about the smoothing groups later in terms of actually um, making the surfaces look correct. So that's all good, we've, we've got that done. Um, next step is going to be actually creating this sort of small front panel. So if you look on the front view, uh, yeah, there's actually like an extrusion. So if you have a look just here, there's an inner area that kind of pops out as well, just here. So it's exactly the same shape as the outside, um, but it's just set inside a little bit more. So how we can do that is go to Polygon. We can select the front poly. Once again, press Alt and X to make it semi-transparent. Uh, so we select that front polygon. And then we're going to go into inset. If you bring up the settings by clicking on it, then that's going to allow you to bring in, like, like I said, a shape which is the same as the outside. All right, so the same as the overall um, f well, form of this walkie talkie of this box so far, but it's going to actually set it inside uh, the outline. So we're going to bring that in and try and line that up. So it's really difficult to see, but if we zoom in, it might be a bit easier for you. So if you sort of go in, you can kind of see where that edge is just there, just here. So we're going to make it fit with that right about here. Okay. So it's not too much, but it's just enough that it gives you a nice little border around um, the outside. Okay. So that's, that's fine. So if I click off, you'll, you'll notice now. So again, I press the tick to apply it. Um, that's going to create it for you and that is done. So select that front polygon again uh, first, and then we're gonna go and click onto bevel. Okay, so we're gonna click the little button next to bevel to bring up the settings for it. And then we're gonna reduce the bevel height. So obviously that's coming out quite a bit. If you look on this side view just here, uh, we should be able to see just how much we want that to come out. So we're gonna match that up. You see that, we're gonna match that up 
with that panel just there. So again, so it's, it's important here that you start looking at all the views. Uh, we will adjust this, like I say, a little bit later because the bottom of the of the object sort of comes in a little bit more. Um, so we'll fix that in just a bit, but um, we're just gonna try and get it overall looking okay. Um, so once that's done, we can actually adjust the outline amounts as well. So we can bring that in like that. But again, we want it to be fairly uh, subtle as well. So that's gonna be around about, for me, just that much. So it just comes in uh, like so. Okay, I'm going to hit the tick as well just to apply it. Now one key thing I want to mention, if you keep having the issue when you change viewport um, that you lose the selection, that's because you're pressing the left mouse button instead of the middle mouse button. So whenever you change views, always use the middle mouse button. That will maintain the selection, it's going to keep that selection and not obviously lose it by clicking the left mouse button and that means that you lose the effect and you have to reselect it again okay so use the middle mouse button um, just to switch the viewports that's going to save you any bother in terms of losing the selection so press the tick done okay so now if I just press alt and x and press f4 to click off my object can you see what we've got there that's kind of like the outline that's just there as well okay so that's done great next step we're just going to be now, I guess, shaping this because um, it's a little bit, I guess, uh, a little bit boxy still. I mean, if you look in the side view, the front kind of starts to arc in a little bit. Um, so we're going to be fixing that in just a second. So we're going to go ahead onto Vertex. We're going to press Alt and X again, and it's just this front side that angles in. So the best way to do this is if you select the entire bottom left corner. Okay, so click and drag over all of those vertices. We're gonna then go on to rotate, and then we're gonna rotate that so it matches up, okay? If you wanna get rid of free rotate, uh, sorry, snap rotation, then you can click on that. That's gonna give you more control just to match that up a little bit better. Okay, so I'm gonna match the angle of these edges with this just here. So I'm gonna match that up as best as I can around about here, and then I'm gonna to go to the move tool and I'm gonna simply pull that across, okay? So it kind of matches up as best. Well, as best as I can, really, because, you know, like I said, it's not going to work perfectly because the references are a little bit funny. Um, but that's going to work pretty well. Okay, so we've got that lined up. We just pulled it across, so the front uh, edge just there matches up with that panel just there. Okay, so that's done. That looks pretty good. The only thing that I'll have to do in a little while is I'm going to have to round it off a little bit. So right now it's very straight edged, whereas we can see it kind of curves, but we'll fix that uh, in just a short while.